So, um, I'm going to do a, another reaction video. Um, this is, uh, I, I'm a big fan of The Majority Report. I think it's the greatest new show ever made. Um, I think that Sam Cedar is very weak on comedy. And I want to point out the holes in his argument. I had uh, challenged him to a friendly debate and explained that I, I really think that he's the master debater of the internet but uh, for for some weird reason he's very flawed in this area and um, so I I thought uh, when he was at the Bellagio doing a tort conference I'd run down there I figured it was 15 minutes away I went down there I couldn't find him I tweeted him at the time I had Twitter and I said uh, you know because I had been complaining to him about this for a while and I said well come down to this open mic uh, maybe you could do some time or whatever I don't care but we could do a quick interview it'll take 15 minutes he said he's always willing to debate anybody any youtuber at all so I thought eh, he never he won't do it he won't even respond to me so uh, cold feet Sam Cedar versus uh, ESG on comedy and political correctness and uh, he is apparently whining because the colleges which he never plays at are not hospitable to um, his humor, which doesn't in any way push any boundaries and has been never been interesting ever. Okay, remember what he said about pushing boundaries. Pushing boundaries. And we'll set aside the fact that Seinfeld, the television series, pushed boundaries and was very politically incorrect. Um... Seinfeld didn't say that. Seinfeld said comedy and comedians in general are having a hard time on college campuses. And I'll give you an example. Nimesh Patel told a joke. He, apparently he was killing, but the booker, not the audience, and this is the main point I want to make, the booker shut the show down. And it was over a joke that he said about how uh, no one chooses to be gay. Um... And the evidence of that would be, like, black people. There's black gay people. Um, and, uh, you know, nobody wakes up and thinks to themselves, hey, you know, uh, this whole black thing's pretty e a little too easy. How about I double down? Literally had the fucking mic unplugged. Um, apparently he's not going to play the colleges that he was never going to play in the first place because... You know, how many how many parking lots do you need right to be the built bed. into your say building that. anyways for all your cars? He didn't say that. The thing is, well, first of all, is, this is the worst. This is an example of, you know how sometimes uh, something will happen, well, that wasn't even based on much. Wow, 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 wow. He wow, played wow, wow. no college. He had no negative experience. The whole, his whole uh, theory was based on on. on Things that he heard people say, his friends say about playing colleges. And it's a valid complaint. An offhand remark, he, he, dra he, you know, he, he has a conversation with his daughter. She makes an offhand remark uh, about something being sexist. And this these, these is what he builds his whole theory on. And it all... I don't know what his daughter has to do with it, but he, was, uh, he did say something. His 14-year-old daughter... His wife said, "Hey, why don't you come down to the city? Uh, you know, you 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 you're gonna want to meet some more. You want to meet boys. You're at the age where you're gonna meet boys." And then she went, "That's sexist." But whatever. because he has this bit where he says, uh, "All of a sudden, I'm a gay French king." Okay. Right? What was that? The bit? the bit is on um, uh, on the Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon. You can look it up on YouTube. I'm not gonna play it because of the copyright, but trust me, it got an applause line. The bit was about cell phones, about how they, about how people are disconnected because of uh, in their personal interactions because of cell phones. And uh, he goes in, at, you know, uh, people say, "Oh, people are important to me," and then he says, uh, "Oh, they don't seem really important the way you uh, just glide through them like a gay French king." And he makes this motion with his hands. It gets a big laugh. It gets an applause break. It wasn't the problem that originally, like a year or two ago, at some uh, forum, he was talking about his Comedians with Cars show. And somebody said, how come you never have any black comedians on there? And, oh, he doesn't care about gender, right? That was or, or gender or whatever it was. Or... All right. So I admit I have heard this before. Um, and I went and I looked and I looked it up. So here's a list of comedians that uh, Seinfeld has had on that show. So I don't know where he got this from. 
Uh, Mario Joyner, Sarah Silverman, Sarah Jessica Parker, Chris Rock, George Wallace, Aziz Ansari, Kevin Hart, Steve Harvey, Trevor Noah, Barack Obama, J.B. Smooth, Cedric the Entertainer, Chappelle, Tracy Morgan, Hassan Minaj, Eddie Murphy, Ellen DeGeneres, Kate McKinnon, Kristen Wiig, Margaret Cho, Kathleen Madigan, Ali Wentworth, Miranda Sings. That's just when I stopped writing. All right. Female comedians. And then he basically enlists Ellen Cleghorn uh, when he does his Saturday Night Live. Uh, I wrote that up, too. Saturday Night Live or whatever it was. Uh, and gets Ellen Cleghorn to sort of uh, basically justify his uh, racism and sexism. Actually, the joke was his lack of justification. And this was really, and I really liked that he did this. I looked this up. So, um, Ellen Cleghorn made a joke. How come there's not more black women? And then Seinfeld says, how come there's not more black women on SNL? And then he, she said, no, just black women in general. It's like I was at the dentist's office and it was all like white people. Uh, and then she asked him uh, about uh, no black women on Seinfeld. And then he said, yes, I'm sorry we did not solve all of the world's problems with our sitcom. Uh, by getting up there and, and sort of like tacitly saying, oh, everything you do is fine, Jerry. That's not what uh, happened. Yeah, everything did fine. But I also love the idea that, uh, you know, like um, like, Lenny, like Lenny Bruce, the first time he got, uh, he said something that was, uh, Richard Pryor said something that's controversial. Bro. Um, like those guys have been like Seinfeld. I don't like this. Right, this guy's exactly. looking at me funny. Exactly. Okay, so I looked that up too, brother. Guess what, Sam? Um... Richard Pryor's uh, NBC show was canceled after four episodes. He gave a press conference about it, complaining about a segment that was cut. Here's some quotes. He said it was a violation of his right as an artist. He says it's an it's an offense to his own to our collective mentality. And actually has some uh, thoughts on censorship and capitalism and racism and you can look it up uh, you should just type in uh, Richard Pryor on capitalism he has some interesting thoughts in the third row one thing he says is the more um, money he made the more mediocre he got it's my understanding uh, Sam has made a lot of money on TV pilots I'm glad he's using it for good because the majority report is definitely a positive for society Whoop. I don't know I think I just turn my mic on. That's not fair. I want to stop comedy now. What's the point? I mean, he's, what risks has he taken? Z zero risks. And the things he said historically, I can go back. I mean, he said the things. Zero risks, dude. He's speaking for those of us who do take risks, especially those of us on the bottom tier. This kind of stuff trickles down. Your justification of political correct censorship and PC culture trickles down to open micers my very first stand-up open mic i was specifically told no jokes about rape that means it doesn't matter what you're saying about rape it doesn't matter if the joke is on society if it's on the cops for not doing rape kits if it's on society for looking the other way no jokes about rape culture no jokes about rape period down the road you are not allowed to make jokes about this is not a subject that we are allowed to talk about right from the bat like uh the audience like sound fine. also you guys are arguing against taking risks so i don't understand what your complaint is this is what really pisses me off is this sort of middle of the road bullshit that they're playing this middle of the road game they're playing pick a fucking side you fucking pussies so said things like the audience is always right right you, you, every you should be able to that's the point that's the other point you're not leaving it up to the audience. You're making the decisions for the rest of us. The booker is making the decision for the audience. Make every crowd laugh. Why can't uh, I just tell a joke and let the audience the decide whether or not it likes it? He's got to be killing all the time. And nothing bad can happen to Jerry Seinfeld. Nothing, if Doesn't anything this sound bad personal? To him, you know, he'll do a bit about how having a billion dollars is not uh, good anymore. Right. Start to solve it. Like, this what it used to be worth. Keep this sounds like <laughs> by the way that's Michael Brooks and Michael Brooks is a little bit part of the dirt bag left that uh, Sam Cedar is not part of 
and uh, and you'll notice like he's not afraid to fucking do jokes like that. And by the way, I know I never noticed that Sam Cedar never tries to cancel fucking Michael Brooks for doing like right wing Mandela, but okay. <laughs> There's a character called Right Wing Mandela. It's very funny, and it's very politically incorrect. <laughs> what people are under attack? Really? That's I mean, political incorrect. I, 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 I will deal with the voting rights act. It's not as offensive fair. as Mandela, but. <laughs> They're laughing, hypocrites. They're laughing. To be fair to Jack Seinfeld, the criticism from college students should be, you were never very funny. Uh, that would be fine. That would be perfectly acceptable. If we can cancel people based on the quality of their work, absolutely. But I think that you would have real objections to that because you're arguing for mediocrity in comedy. That, That's you know, literally what you're so arguing for. Like, uh, there's a difference between dog and cats and uh, airline food uh, as experienced by women and men. Uh, routines that are actually that funny. Okay, by the way, real quick, um, your definition of hack is kind of hack. Like, nobody's talking about airline food, dude. That's not a thing. No one even gets that reference well, anymore. The other thing is... is that and by the way, this is Andy Kindler he's talking to, and I'm an Andy Kindler fan, and my co-host is an Andy Kindler fan, and props to Andy Kindler. I just got done watching an Andy Kindler special, and... He does jokes about fucking Carrot Top, and making fun of Carrot Top is pretty fucking hacky. Sorry. My thing was like, uh, the only time college is. Everybody hates George W. Bush, dude. That's not new. If you've ever been good to play is in the movie Woody Allen. I mean, Woody uh, movie Annie Hall. Right. That's the, only, that's the only positive college. And in the movie Annie Hall, he says to Diane Keaton, hey, stick. Woody, uh, Woody Allen is too edgy for PC culture, by the way. Um. Uh, I, I read a lot of articles about his problematic book. I read uh, uh, he lost forty six million dollars from Amazon. Amazon's claiming in their in, when uh, Woody Allen and his wife sued over that. Um, I I'm assuming um, the the their defense was that um, his opinions on Me Too becoming a uh, warning uh, the Me Too movement. He had said that he encourages the Me Too movement, but he's warning, he made a warning um, to try not to turn it into a witch hunt. And they claim that's why he lost $46 million. Around the next show is going to be completely different. Woody Allen in that movie doing two completely different sets. $64 million. And getting a huge know. laugh by Millions. Danny Eisenhower. Yes, those were the days, right? Hello? Has anybody seen Annie Hall? <laughs> I'm losing it, Seth. Yeah, by the way, Annie Kindler also made an, a joke about Est. Um, you kids are going to have to Google that. I don't have time to explain it, but trust me, it was very hacky in the 70s. Uh, Sam, we have to start moving these to the evening. These kind of... <laughs> pre -tapes. You know, it's, it's 4.30 in the morning on the West Coast. <laughs> I'm calling, uh, Andy always travels to uh, Maui uh, before we do these uh, do these. <laughs> Caldonia, Caldonia, <laughs> what makes your big dick uh, so hard? I, I also, why, why do they call them, why is he, and I love the way all these comics online, they're all of a sudden, uh, they're, it's like they're outraged now by an event that never happened. <laughs> Happens all the time. I just gave you an example of Columbia University. We could talk about um, Louis C.K. getting protested. I believe there was some violence at one of those protests. There were a lot of objections to his stand-up and to the subject matter of his stand-up. And you can allude to the fact uh, of his little jack-off scandal. But come on, in the end, they were really they were they were out to get him because of his content. Because he goes on SNL and he talks about uh, he makes pedophile jokes. That's the real issue. It never happened. It it's happens not all like the time. He ever went to a college? He said, and anyway, said anything negative him? I'm a left wing comic. I can't get booked. And one means that they use it is they uh, tell some story about how I'm a misogynist. The misogyny comes from a bit that I do about how uh, about how men are scared of uh, women booby trapping their vaginas, and it culminates in a joke about uh, a woman who paints a cinder block wall to look like a vagina and then a guy breaks his penis bone. The point is I'm making a connection between misogyny and uh, fear of female sexuality. But anybody on the right 
right-wing comics can very easily just say, well, this guy's a misogynist, he does misogynistic material, and then therefore he can't be on stage because I'm talking about misogyny. He's never had and negative jokes experience about with a college misogyny. So yes, stage, it does have an effect. It's complete, total garbage. When it's he's not garbage. Your, yeah, well, your opinion is garbage. Just like he's just, he just, I don't he think your opinion should be allowed on the air. He is pissy about his whole... He still has a bug up his butt because he can't, uh, he can't, uh, 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 you know, you know, I like how he's a mind reader all of a sudden episode a couple of weeks ago, right? Where, where he talked about how the, there hasn't been many, uh, black people on his show. Why is it okay for Mark Maron not to have black people on his show, but Seinfeld, it's not. And he says, you know, I feel bad about it. I don't run in the same circles as black comedians. And at least he sort of owned it, at least in the context of his of his uh, of his show so it's not his actions it's the fact that he didn't apologize and bow down to Sam Cedar is your problem Jerry could have just said the same thing Jerry could have just said and that you would know, make what? you feel better that makes it okay uh, uh, you wouldn't you know, do this segment from, uh, you know whatever it if is, he had done uh, that uh, bullshit dude uh, Mario Joyner or whoever that guy is uh, I don't know anybody <laughs> he's black a comedian. comic and that's it that's the end of it I George mean, Wallace yes. is a black I mean, comedian Dave Chappelle is a black comedian <laughs> Kevin Hart's a black comedian. <laughs> they were all on his show, show so I don't even know what you're talking about, dude. We had one black, uh, you know, guest uh, spot or something, and that's it. And that's fine. I mean, no, it's not fine, but I mean, it's Andy Kindler's white. What's up? Why is he on your show? It. But instead, it's like some affront to the fact that the whole world does not bend around him enough. I know, and and uh, I I just can't even believe that. But I can't believe how people. You know how it resonated, how people kind of like took up the mantle. Well, I can believe that because. Well, now, what do you think is going on with that? Believe it, motherfucker. One of the diseases that has afflicted comedians. Fighting for free expression and creative freedom in a safe space for artists is a disease. In this age of Twitter, and why I love you, Andy Kindler. Real quick, by the way, a little reminder Sam Cedar nearly got canceled. Uh, from MSNBC, he did in fact get canceled. He ended up getting his job back um, because of uh, people suffering from that disease of wanting free expression. Enough people protested getting his job back. The reason he lost his job is because he made a pedophile rape joke. And, and, and only you, literally only you. And but that's I thought different, about this a lot right? Last Why is night that different? Because I was celebrating my anniversary. With between my wife. what's the difference so between my joke about? I was like, happy anniversary. What? What's the difference between my vagina joke and your stupid fucking Roman Polanski hacky fucking like, joke? I can't stop thinking about Andy Kimmer. Because uh, Andy's really the only one that I genuinely love. Uh, and it's, you know, part of it might be just because it's if it's from afar. Uh, and we don't... <laughs> if I was in New York... If we were living together, I mean. I'm sure I would, I would have a different take on it. But... <laughs> But a lot of comedians on Twitter, it's all like we. I have to. I have to praise these people because it's it's in it's it's part of my marketing. It's called solidarity. It rarely happens in the comedy community, but it would happen in this particular instance because you're affecting everybody's job. One big problem, though, there's a lot of dissenters in the comedy community because because a lot of rich kids are getting into comedy. Because of capitalism only allows rich people to live in California and New York. So a lot of these sort of conservative SJW vampire castle are people are coming coming straight out of the vampire's castle and through college and, and ending up exactly on comedy stages. And they're getting power and they're shutting people down. Uh, playing on Twitter, essentially. Left wing or right wing, they're shutting us down. Well, and how about the fact that people... Well, whoever told anybody this whole this is the most ridiculous thing in the world is this free speech thing. Yeah, what free speech really is ridiculous. Is they want to say whatever they want to say. Yes, that's and free they speech. Don't want to have, they don't want your free speech. You must. It's just like the. No, not when your free speech involves boycotting advertisers. Not when your speech free speech involves pulling a plugs out of microphones. Not when your free speech involves not booking people because you don't agree with their politics or the kind of jokes that they say on stage. That's not free speech, dude. That's a violation of free speech. It's just like with the uh, with the Charlie Hebdo thing. I never even uh, I don't know if we talked about this. But like, I. I don't even know. I don't still don't even quite know what Charlie. Uh, Neither what do I. It's do French, dude. Charlie Nobody Hebdo. ever heard of Charlie Hebdo until they got shot. Of course, we were all horrified. And he's, 
Well, you're horrified, but actually it's probably the best thing that... Charlie Hebdo getting murdered by fucking Islamic terrorists. Well, terrorists, sorry. I apologize for that. Charlie Hebdo writers getting uh, murdered by uh, terrorists is probably the best thing to ever happen to Charlie Hebdo because nobody ever heard of Charlie Hebdo outside of France. Nobody should be uh, killed for uh, a cartoon. Nobody. I, I always feel like it's weird that people make me stipulate it. Right. You know, like I say, well, I don't know if I like the Charlie Hebdo cartoons. They go, well, they shouldn't be killed. Actually, people do have to say that, Andy, because you're taking an anti-speech position. So we need to gauge how far you're willing to take this. Oh, I'm sorry <laughs> I didn't stipulate that. Right, oh, I'm right. sorry. Yeah. So let me make an announcement. I don't think people should be killed for cartoons. That's I'm a relief. Really, I'm 100% with you on that. Me but, too. But then they say, oh, but you also have to say, I am Charlie Hebdo. You have to say, and... No, you don't. Nobody knows. Again, Charlie Hebdo is French. It's not even funny. I'm not Nobody cares say, I'm or knows know. about it. I'm not going to say... That's uh, made up. You're that, making that, that up. I, I, uh, that this is brilliant stuff. It's not brilliant stuff. Uh, it's French. They, you know, Because people were killed for it. And so it's, it's the same thing. It's like they, 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 they... French people, they used to make good films and uh, they eat pussy, I guess. I don't they know. They don't want you to have any... They want you to be able to... to you have to agree that something is... If you object right. to it... You have to you agree stopping them from expressing that people themselves. have the right to express you themselves. You yes, you have to agree with yourself. that. I wish there was someone who could say what I'm saying. Uh, well, no, I, you're absolutely right. It's not I mean, Sam Cedar because he's like, just as muddled like, as you are. It's basically coming out and saying... Not enough people are buying my comedy album. That's I might not the my fucking speech. issue, dude. That is not the fucking issue. It's the comedy album not being released. It's Ari Shafir getting bomb threats at his comedy club because he made a joke about Kobe Bryant because apparently Kobe Bryant is a fucking saint. And you're not allowed to say bad things about Kobe Bryant. Therefore, his special, Jew, it was called Jew, we were all looking forward to seeing it. We don't get to see it now. Just that's called cancel culture. People that enjoy it. You know what? I mean, yeah. honestly, that's what it basically is. You can, uh, Jerry Seinfeld, for all I care, can go into uh, stand-up New Bullshit. York every night of the week and tell If Ray, that were your position, you wouldn't be making this video right now. It's his joke's all he wants. I mean, that's his prerogative. Mm, but it's let's also, play that back. I'm sorry, I talked over that. And Jerry Seinfeld, for all I care, can go into uh, stand-up New York every night of the week and tell racist jokes all he wants. I what racist jokes are you fucking talking about, dude? He did a joke about a cell phone. What the fuck are you talking about? Jerry Seinfeld doesn't do racist... You just literally just said he's not pushing any boundaries. He's not doing anything controversial at all. So what are you talking about? What racist jokes are you talking about? I mean, He's not talking about race. But it's also the rest you of the You just made that up again. Say, hey, those jokes are racist. We don't like it. What racist jokes? To see you anymore. What the fuck yeah, are you it's, talking it's, about? Exactly. And no, that's not the fucking issue. That's not what we're debating. We're not debating whether or not... Dude, the people that fucking blog about comedy, who try to shut comics down, they don't actually watch comedy. They're trying to stop other people from watching comedy. For example, Ari Shafir, as I had just fucking named. Right, and the whole thing is like, he's so scared. If my gay French king, if I can't say my gay French king material, what am I gonna, you know, that's it. It's over for me. I, this you is said, the you end said of it on it. the Tonight Show. Well, it's not just the end of it for him. It's the end of it for all of us. It is. Well, right, and that's the thing it too. Is. It's like, it literally is. If you can't make a joke about cell phones in which you say the phrase "gay French king," then yeah, that literal that is a slippery slope. That means I can't fucking do jokes about race or whatever, whatever the fuck you want to talk about, whatever taboo topic that gets people excited. Because regardless of the fact that you wrote sitcoms, I'd hate to break it to you, buddy. People fucking do sitcom type humor at their work all day. When they go to a fucking club, they want to hear something that they can't hear in polite society. There used to be these lines in Budville, Sam, which you uh, you know I'm an expert about. But they used to be these uh, lines like, uh, "Hey, nice to see you back in men's clothes again." That's right? funny. I didn't even know what that meant when I was. Like, I'm still not quite sure. But the idea, like, yeah, maybe it was funny at one point. 
to say that this guy was that guy dressed up like a girl. But that's not up to you to decide, Andy. That's up for the audience to decide. Girl, you know, what's that guy just like a, a a woman and he's a man? Well, yes. Now there are people who are dressed up like women who are men. So at some point, we're gonna have to accept that that's that's the way people are expressing themselves, and you're not gonna end. Your career's not gonna end because you can't do. Uh, all of your uh, tranny jokes. Right. Not We're not talking about careers ending. We're talking about whether or not careers can even start. Exactly. I mean, the end of comedy as we know it. It is and the end of comedy. And I don't know it's happening. happening. You can watch it. Gonna... You can watch it on late night. The effects of political correctness on late night culture. And by the way, that's essentially the effects of capitalism because that's what happens when only rich kids. Who are brainwashed by their stupid little fucking neoliberal colleges that's what happens that's who runs national lampoon that's who runs the harvard lampoon and when the harvard lampoon runs comedy comedy is going to be fucking very boring if they can only do stuff that's based on uh a certain amount of people hating something but it's like yes i understand that there is a point about political correctness but that's not the point. You don't like, get to. Uh, you don't get to waffle. The first controversial thing. You're pro political correctness. Stop fucking waffling. Yeah, I want to say like it's the end of comedy. Where me, meanwhile, Lenny Bruce really was couldn't play somewhere. Literally yes. was stopped from playing anywhere. Well, no, 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 no. He died. He died. And I'm trying to figure out whether or not you guys are cool with that. Rested on suffer. stage. He died. He was literally arrested on stage. Yes, and, and you are not, for that and, or against and, that? And, and let me ask you this. about That's the, the problem. You know, the, um, uh, and by the way, Lenny Bruce uh, had some complaints about it. Um, you can watch a performance video of him on YouTube. It's the only filmed performance of his stand-up, and it's essentially uh, an hour-long uh, complaint about his court case. He literally read his court transcripts. Uh, I, I listened to uh, so somebody he had complaints about political correct culture. The, uh, Kurt, uh, I can't remember. Kurt Metzger. From, he, he writes Look on, at Sam um, trying to be hip. Kurt Metzger. Kurt Metzger. And yeah, um, I you know I I actually I enjoyed the interview and he sounds like a, a, a funny guy to me. I, he the, is a funny guy. The and and he was one who gets who's 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 upset. Kindler again is a hypocrite because Kurt Metzger's album is called White Precious that essentially is making which is essentially one big fat joke one big rape joke about a fat lady there's gay jokes there's jokes about autistic kids there's a joke where he talks about how dodgeball was used as therapy for kids with autism. I mean, At when he was a kid. Taking him so on why are you backing and, you know, him all of a sudden? You're a hypocrite. It's like look I personally, I don't get offended by people using. You certain apparently words. do, I don't. because I you're think, arguing right, against their right but to be offensive. The idea that you you demand because I'm making a joke, and then of course you know every comedian is the expert about what's funny. That's fine. The I audience is the expert, I sold actually. A lot of pilots, too. I made no, a lot you're of not. Money, so for the rest of my. So the, for the rest of your life, you get to be an expert. Sitcoms suck, dude. Your writing sitcoms means jack fucking shit other than that's your vision of what comedy should be. A fucking laugh track with socially acceptable jokes that do not push boundaries. my life, I get to determine what's funny and what's not, okay? Uh, but the bottom line is, um, the, the, uh, they all say the only thing that's important is that it's funny. Well... Different people have different senses of humor, A and B, okay? So, but those and people should decide on top of what that, they like and what they don't like, like. Just because you're making a joke does not get you, put you into some type of zone where nobody's allowed to be offended because I'm making a joke. Scarecrow argument. If I only had a brain. Buddy, that's a scarecrow argument. No one's arguing about whether or not people should be forced to like something what that doesn't even make any sense the argument is should we be allowed to tell the jokes that we want to on stage and full stop as michael brooks would say that's the debate we're having like i'm in a special zone the and by the way it's not comics who believe that they're in a special zone it's articles 
in uh, God, like the Guardian and shit. And uh, God, what was the one? The Washington Post I just read going after Dave Chappelle and saying Dave Chappelle should not be allowed. That Dave Chappelle has a responsibility. I just saw Ricky Gervais talking to the guy from uh, that actor from Big Sick. I'm not even going to try and pronounce his name. This guy starts saying, well, jokes hurt people. He has no data or evidence to prove that. The right's been trying to prove that for years. And I'm assuming this guy's a right winger too. And, uh, and the key uh, and the evidence I have of him being a right winger because he didn't even notice his own hypocrisy because the Big Sick has a great 9-11 joke. It went, uh, uh, God, it was a tragedy. And he said 9-11 was a tragedy. We lost 17 of our best people. That joke, by the way, was stolen by right-wingers and anti-Muslims uh, uh, who were going after Alan Omar. They actually used that in a, they stole that joke and used it in a, in a meme. So that guy's a hypocrite. Joke zone. And ever since that, you know, Bud Friedman put that one. And just because it was in a meme doesn't mean it did harm. What it meant, it gave an opening for people like me to go, hey, you stole that joke from a Muslim. Brick on top of the other to make that wall. All of a sudden, yeah. we all left our blood and sweat and tears there. Dude, we're not the ones making that argument. The, the people, people like you are making that argument. You're the ones that are giving us these holy powers where we're going to tell a joke and that's going to change the world. Get the fuck out of well, here, dude. Like You're example. a hypocrite, man. Yeah. I definitely believe like, that there is this, this like, is so uh, knee -jerk, easy. He's, uh, Sam Cedar is so good at debate. And look at how weak these arguments are. They're all over the place. They're unfocused. They're scarecrowed. They're fucking ad hominems all over the fucking place. Th th these arguments don't even make sense, dude. Correctness, sure. whatever. So, for example, perfect example. When Colbert, we all know Colbert. Perfect example. Watch them fucking dig their own grave with this one. This is hilarious. He does genius comedy, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. He does, um, he used to. Uh, you know, Sark. Uh, he used to, and then he, then he became a Sam Cedar type. They, then he started doing the kind of humor that Sam Cedar likes. They, put, they did one line from his bit. Uh, uh, and then all of a sudden this cancel Colbert thing. Yeah, no, that was, was that was that was over the the, the Redskins thing. It was and a great he show. He had done a bit. He had yeah, every right to it tell was. it. He had come out and done. I'm going to do a ching chong ching chong thing, uh, and he was satirizing. Essentially, context is completely irrelevant. I want to point that out first of all because that was the argument these guys have been making for years. Context doesn't matter. There's literally that one guy I can't remember his name, but he used to go to open mics and start screaming. He used to scream against comedians he used to scream context doesn't matter actually showing like how much uh racism was in context is the irrelevant owner saying well context is irrelevant it was irrelevant to the, to the uh, cancel Native colbert American campaign or whatever it was uh it's in quotes because it was one person satirizing that um a an online uh twitter activist basically said um you know w don't use uh asian people as the butt of your jokes uh, By the way, using Asian people as the butt of your jokes is not technically punching down by their own definition because uh, Asian people are the uh, are the uh, highest, biggest money makers on average in America. And had every right in my mind to they say, have most you know, of the economic power in this country. Colbert. Uh, but I still thought that what Colbert was said was was funny. I thought the satire was good, and that's my opportunity to judge it. But it's like you know. A you're completely fucking contradicting yourself. So which side are you on here? Are you on the side for cancel Colbert or are you on the side of Colbert? I'm on the Colbert side of Colbert. Coming out and saying like I'm being, I'm uh, you know my free my freedom of speech is being curtailed. He did respond to it. You can find his response on YouTube. He's lying. He didn't whine about it. He just did. I, no, he told a joke. He made jokes. That's what we yeah, all what do. What happened? Is Colbert gone now? Is his career? Dude, that's completely fucking irrelevant. He has power. There's those of us who have no power, who have no fucking space, and who are not allowed to go on stage. So fuck you. No, he's taking over for Letterman. That's so a really, to... that's a really hegemonic fucking uh, argument. That the people in power are not harmed, so therefore there is no harm. The whole idea. The rest of us oh, don't if count, if, apparently. If we can't have a climate where we have to nip this in the bud, anybody objecting to what we're saying, because it'll be the end of comedy. It is the end of comedy. Because if it happens to Colbert, then it happens to the people on the street. Down here. I at the bottom of the ladder. Because my act is based on things being terrible. I think there's more funny comics... 
today saying more uh, and by the way her failure is not an excuse is not a justification the ends her failure to meet her ends her failure in life and as an as a quote-unquote activist because right wing there's no such thing as right wing activism this idea that uh, she failed, therefore that justified the attempt to cancel a show over a joke. And by the way, how come no one's questioning Suey Park's fucking hatred of the Native Americans? Um, innovative things. And Why can't we cancel her? They want, and they can be gay. And you know, I'm not saying there's no sexism and there's no, uh, you know, uh, uh, segregation in comedy. And the, there aren't the same problems as there are in every single field. But the idea that uh, it's the same thing with, with Pat Oswalt when Salon uh, right. incorrectly went after uh, Pat Oswalt for doing what I thought was a hilarious joke. Uh, Why were they incorrect going after Pat Oswalt, but you're correct to go after Jerry Seinfeld? Could you explain that? About the Chinese. He's not going to. They got the Chinese pilots' uh, names wrong. Pat Oswalt still has a career. Stephen Colbert still has a career. The argument is it's false on its face. If that no, makes it's any not. Sense. Uh, that we have to accept all. I don't have a career. There's a lot of comics I'm in who are great who don't have careers. Drawing Muhammad with his balls hanging down to the floor. Right. Because if I don't say I love that, then uh, then the the terrorists win or something. It's like got that. nothing to do with whether or not you like of, it, dude. Of, uh, political correctness. It's whether it's whether or not you're not liking it affects whether or not other people get to see it. That's the issue I mean, we're debating. Give me a break. Colbert was funny about it in terms of their response. and it, you, you just know, said he didn't have a response. In fact, I would argue that if you can't make a joke, if you can't be funny in response to, the, uh, to what they're saying... No, you're arguing that we don't have a right to try to be funny. And then uh, then uh, you should hand in your, your comedy card. How many women does it take... I think if your only fucking comedy experience is writing sitcoms that didn't even take off, I think you turned in your comedy card. Alright. I think I won this one. Um, real quick, uh, catch me, um, uh, in my bathtub later doing stand-up. <laughs>